good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about orbital mechanics. Now this is a blend of gravitational fields and circular motion. I'm going to actually use an example which will hopefully give us an answer which is something that you recognise and understand. So what I have here is I have the Sun and the Earth and they are attracting each other, they're having a gravitational field upon each other, okay? So the force they're feeling because they're being attracted due to their gravitational fields. And of course, I can calculate this force using Newton's law of gravitation. So that's what I'm just going to do now. So this force is G, mass of the sun, mass of the earth, divided by R squared. And the radius between the sun and the earth is one astronomical unit, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11. So we're just going to put this information now. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 1.99 times 10 to the 30. And this is on your data sheet, but I have put it up here for you. Times by 5.98 times 10 to the 24. All over 1.5 times 10 to the 11 squared. Okay, so 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 1.99 times... Oops. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times by 1.99 times 10 to the 9. Oh, 30, sorry. Times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the 11 squared. And I get an answer of 3.5 times 10 to the 22 newtons. So this is the force of attraction between these two masses. Now, this, the Earth, okay, is being accelerated towards the sun because the sun is the bigger mass. Therefore, the field strength, the gravitational field strength, is bigger when the earth is in the sun's gravitational field rather than the sun being in the earth's gravitational field. So what's actually happening is the earth is being attracted towards the sun with a force this way. Now this force is a centripetal force because the earth is also moving along in time and space so it's also trying to move linearly but it's being pulled this way by the sun and this motion is circular motion so this force here is actually a centripetal force which means I can use all of my centripetal and circular motion force equations with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this information to see if I can prove to you the year. What, how long is one year, one orbit? Okay, so I know that F equals mv squared over r. <clears throat> So this force here, this 3.5 times 10 to the 22, is going to be my force, my centripetal force. And remember, this m is the thing that's moving in the circle, so this is going to be the mass of the Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my velocity. So my velocity squared is going to be my force times by the radius over the mass of the Earth. And I'm going to put all this information in. So times by 1.5 times 10 to the 11 divided by the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. So my V squared is 88488666. Six meters squared, second squared. So my V is the square root of that, which is 29747 meters per second. And I know that seems fast, but that is the speed we're orbiting at, okay? I can then take this value and use V equals omega R. So omega is V over R. And I can work out my value for my angular velocity here. So 29747 over 1.5 times 10 to the 11. is 1.98 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per second. And 
if I use the formula omega equals 2 pi over t, I can work out the time period of my orbit. So t is 2 pi over omega. So my time is 31.7 times 10 to the 6 seconds. So that is the time for one orbit in seconds. If I divide that, okay, by 60 to get how many minutes, that is 52.8051 minutes. Divide that by another 60, uh, divide that by 20, oh, 60 to get the hours, which is 8,800 hours. I divide that by 24. That is 366.7 days. 365 days a year. I don't think that's half bad at all. Now this is using orbital mechanics to work out the orbit of the day. And you can do that because the force between these two planets, this force is acting as a centripetal force which means that you can use your orbital mechanics for this. Now, Kepler used this concept here and worked out Kepler's third law that t squared is proportional to the radius cubed, and that is in my next video. But please be aware that you may be using a lot of orbital mechanic formulas, circular motion formula, with your gravitational formula here. And that is orbital mechanics.